Good morning. Welcome to Our Lady of Lourdes. Thank you for all your continued cooperation in making our celebration safe for all. We welcome those joining from our home live stream as well. Today we celebrate the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. The presider for this liturgy is our pastor, Father Scott Wimsett. Please rise. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and power of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. As we gather on this festive day to give God thanks and praise, we begin by admitting that we are sinners. For the times we've sinned, let us ask now for God's forgiveness and mercy.
Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good and, by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day, I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all of the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like a fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. Thirsting for you, oh Lord, thirsting for you. 
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercy of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourself to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. What a difference a week makes in the life of the church. If you remember back last weekend, we heard Peter stepped forward and make that bold proclamation of who Jesus was. As they're walking along, Jesus pauses and throws out that net and says, who do people say that I am? And we heard the various responses. But then Jesus narrows the vision, who do you say that I am? And it's Peter that steps forward and says, you are the Christ. And then just a week later, here we are again, and this time, Jesus is teaching his disciples about his life, his ministry, and his suffering and death. 
And then we hear what happens when it's just too much for Peter to handle. God forbid no such thing happen to you. And then the rebuke. Get behind me, Satan. You're not speaking as God does, but as human beings do. And I think for most of us, as we hear this, it, certainly it's, it's a struggle to comprehend what, what is that all about. But it reveals to us, I think, what it means to be a Christian on the journey, a, a, a disciple on the journey. Because as we know that it's not a perfect life, we struggle with life as it comes our way. But last week we heard Peter, full of the Spirit, step out and make that proclamation. And this week, maybe hearing what's about to happen, fear takes the place of the Spirit. And he just doesn't know what to do. And so he says what he says, and Jesus engages him. Jesus challenges him. That that's not what it means. This is what it means. That this is how you're called to live your life. And then he addresses all the disciples. This is what you have to do if you're going to be my disciple. You have to take up your cross and follow me. You've got to deny yourself too along the way. It's not your kingdom, it's God's kingdom that we're about. That first reading from Jeremiah, I, I just love those words as the church sets them before us today. I think most of us get duped by the, the message. I, I like to think of it this way. This is how it starts. It starts at Christmas time for most of us. We have that beautiful Christmas story of the birth of Jesus. And who can resist a baby? I mean, babies are cute. You know, they're, we have phrases, that's cute as a button, or you know, all those little things about babies. And you know, when you put your finger out, a baby does this, right? And a baby holds on. And I like to think that at Christmas time, that's what we do. We get so enamored with the birth of Jesus that we fail to realize he's holding on to us. And he begins to mature and grow. And our relationship with him begins to change from the child to the young adult to the man. And then the relationship starts to make demands. But we've already been duped. We like him. And so we're going to stick to him regardless of what comes our way. And most disciples will do that. Some will run for fear of what's going to happen because they suddenly realize, wow, this is just too much for me. I can't do what he asks. And I think that's part of the story that we hear today. Peter is struggling with now what this truly means in the life of being a disciple of Jesus. What's he call us to? What's he invite us to be about? We've already been duped because he was too strong. The psychology involved just took us in a little different direction. But now take up your cross and follow me. And this is what it means. You've got to lose yourself to find yourself. You've got to lose it to find life. And life happens in me. So along the journey, we can make proclamations about who Jesus is. Even those that he selected to walk that intimate journey early on struggled with what it means. We're going to struggle like they did. But he challenges us over and over again. Be my disciple. Follow me. But this is what it entails. There will be suffering and ultimately it's going to lead to the cross. And you're going to carry your cross. But in the end, what he leads to, what he leads us to, is glory. So a powerful, simple gospel. And in front of us today, again, is Peter speaking words, perhaps, not only on behalf of himself, but on behalf of you and me. He symbolizes who we are on the journey of faith and how the invitation is extended over and over and over again. Be not afraid. Come, follow me. Take up your cross and have life.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Loving God, we strive always to model our lives after your Son. We offer these prayers for one another. Our response is, loving God, hear our prayer. For all of us, God's holy church, that we stand firm in our commitment for social justice and serve the poor and vulnerable and all who suffer, wherever they may be. We pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. For those who are held captive physically, emotionally, or economically throughout the world, may their hope remain strong and their freedom soon secured. We pray. Loving God. For those impoverished due to lost jobs or medical expenses, may they receive the assistance necessary to provide for themselves and their families. We pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Margie Forsting and Gloria Kleinholder, may they rest in the eternal love of Jesus. We pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. For all gathered here and at home, may we pray for one another and be supportive in our language and use of social media during these continued stressful times. We pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. God of light and salvation, we place our trust in you. Help us to be our best selves in all that we do, especially to love one another as you command. We ask this through Christ our Lord. my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power. 
Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of the host, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in your heart. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in your heart. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Well, if you're sitting in a pew with your husband, wife, or your children, please extend to them a sign of peace. If not, just a gentle sign of peace with your friends and neighbors today. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall.
God, you ask us to deny ourselves, take up our crosses, and follow you. Help us have the courage and follow you as we pray. Our parish is composed of people like me. I help make it what it is. It will be friendly if I am. It will be holy if I am. Its pews will be filled if I help fill them. It will be prayerful if I pray. It will make generous gifts to many causes if I am a generous giver. It will bring others into its worship if I invite and bring them. It will be a parish of loyalty and love, of fearlessness and faith, of compassion, charity, and mercy, if I can make it what it is and fill it with these same things. Therefore, with the help of God, I shall dedicate myself to the task of being all the things that I want our parish to be. Amen. This coming Wednesday, September 2nd, at 6.30 p.m., we will hold a prayer service for human dignity here in the sanctuary. Please join us in person or via our live stream as we pray together for social justice, the end of uncertainty due to COVID, and dignity for all human life. As well, our offering basket is in the, on the back table. Please give what you can to support our parish in these difficult times. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beg you, Lord, that being the food of charity may conform our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. In Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks for that.